I have a question. How would you feel staring at a cloud of superheated toxic gas and lava hurtling down the side of a volcano knowing that if you are caught in its path, game over? Unnerving, right? So to find out more about this phenomenon and why it commands so much respect, I want to take you somewhere that really, really blew my mind. August 2010, Northern Sumatra, Indonesia. Mount Sinabung erupts. There's confusion. No one knows what's gonna happen next. You see, Sinabung's not even classified as an active volcano, but no one's expecting this. I sit in a field for three days with my mate Mark, anxiously waiting for any signs of activity. Nothing. We give up and head home. Sinabung goes back to sleep and I quickly forget about it. Three years go by. Then, something remarkable happens. Cinnabung erupts again, this time violently. And there we find ourselves, sat in the same fields as three years earlier, but looking at a landscape transformed. The volcano is unrecognizable. Weeks of eruptive activity have turned the once lush slopes of the mountain into a volcanic hellscape. Vibrant forests reduced to bare sticks farmland buried under meters of scorching volcanic debris, communities wiped off the map. It's clear whatever's happening here, the effects are catastrophic. We sit and wait, watching dust devils dancing across the flanks of the volcano. We make some friends. Sinabung. Sinabung, bukan sinabung. Sinabung. One, two, three days go by. And then on day four, wow. A flicker of movement at the summit. At first, you think your eyes are playing tricks on you. What appears to be a few tumbling rocks suddenly bursts into life. Explosive energy propels an accelerating avalanche of lava and ash that grows larger and larger. An unstoppable force consuming and scorching everything in its path. And there we are, suddenly witnessing the most fearsome of all volcanic phenomena the pyroclastic flow. And it's heading right towards us. The flow exhausts itself, turning the sky black with thick, choking volcanic ash, but we're safe, well outside the five kilometer exclusion zone. So what the hell just happened there? Let's take a closer look. Cinnabung is what is called a subduction zone stratovolcano. And these are generally characterized by violent explosive eruptions. In Cinnabung's case, viscous lava begins to accumulate at the summit, forming what is called a lava dome. As the dome grows, it becomes really unstable and large chunks of it literally just break away and start cascading down the side of the volcano. The sudden release of tremendous heat and escaping gas creates a superheated cloud of volcanic ash. Hidden beneath this cloud, a hot mass of lava, rocks and debris, aided by gravity, hurls along the ground. They can move at speeds well in excess of 100 miles per hour and reach temperatures of 700 degrees Celsius. Unsurvivable for any living creature caught in their path. The eruptions continue for months, and when we return in June 2015, we witness pyroclastic flows on a scale that dwarf all those that we've filmed before. I've witnessed a lot of pretty wild natural events. Super typhoons, massive floods, lava lakes. But nothing has made me feel so in awe of nature, yet at the same time so fragile and insignificant as staring down the throat of Cinnabon as it was unleashing those pyroclastic flows. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It really, really does help the channel. And if you're into storm chasing and volcano adventures, then check out the videos I put up here or here, whichever side it is. And I'll see you inside the next volcano or typhoon. <laughs>